Welcome back. In this video we're going to finish our alien worm setup and set up the shader. The first thing I want to do is save the curve factor as a point attribute so we can access it in the shader. So let's copy the store named attribute from over here. And this one needs to go after the set position so it samples the correct factor along the curve. Let's change this to sample a float and I just grab another one here, plug this in here and I'll call this fac. Now let's finally build the shader. So I need a new window here and open the shader editor and then add a new material. We of course need to assign the shader as well. Let's use the set material node and choose our, let's call it alien worm shader. Also what I forgot before, we need to set this to shade smooth. So let's quickly head back to the node setup of our base shape. So in here, let's just grab a set shade smooth node and drop that in at the end here. Also, Lou is from the future here. I want to ensure that the performance is always running smoothly, so we're gonna cache our base shape result here. So let's add a bake node, and you can now just bake a still frame. I'd like to have this a little bit more elaborate so that I can have two different resolutions, one for preview and one for rendering. We'll copy our bake node here with the Control shift d and then add a is viewport node and a switch. And for this second bake here, I'm gonna head back to my resolution here. I can crank this up, let's say to 512, which is quite high resolution. And then I can bake this node. That's gonna take a bit. Now that this is baked, I can quickly preview this. This is a lot higher resolution now versus this. I'm gonna plug this is viewport into our switch node here. And this node is checking if we are in the viewport or if we are rendering. Now, if I want to have manual control over this as well, I can add a group input and also grab a boolean math node and plug a new input into the second input of the boolean math. In the end panel we can call this preview resolution and now we have a toggle in our modifier stack that we can toggle on and off. Right now the inputs are switched because let's uh, name this, this is the high res, this is the low res, let's switch these inputs around. And now our checker box here is working correctly. I will remove the slide here and for now just add like a big area light on top and set this to, I don't know, 600. Also this shader will mostly work in cycles so I will switch to that and we can now start with the shader. The base components for the shader won't use the principal BSCF at all but we will use a glossy shader and a translucent shader. You can really have a lot of fun with the translucent shader. It's quite odd at times but can yield really interesting results. I then want to mix those two shaders and I want to do this by using a ambient occlusion node and I want then a color ramp to control how to mix those two. And I want the inner parts to be the translucent shader and I color this blue for now to see what is happening. I just dial in the mask now until I'm happy with it. For the glossy I want the roughness to be quite low so it's quite reflective and for now I want to set the world quite dark. Also let's remove the floor here and the axis so we can preview our render better. And now I want to have some fun with the colors of this translucent shader. So the first thing that I want to do is grab a hue saturation value node. This really has become one of my favorite nodes in the past two years because you can really drive interesting color effects with this. So let's add a base color for this, maybe just this blue here. If we use the U slider here, we can offset our color. And we could use, for example, a layer weight node and use the facing to drive the hue here. And this already looks quite interesting. You can then dial in how strong this is affecting the hue by using a multiply node. So by using higher values here, you will get a lot more rainbowy colors because the hue value is a circle. So if the hue is zero or it is one, it is basically the same. So this means that we'll always have continuous colors. So we can really crank up the slider here and the shader won't break, but it can, as you can see, really overdo this effect. So I like to go with lower values here. And if you want to offset the whole color here, you can add another add node afterwards and then this can shift the hue range. Let me turn on the denoising here so it doesn't look as shit on video. Another node that we can use here that is interesting is another ambient occlusion node. 
and I want the same control, so I'll just copy these. And if I plug this in here, you can see that you can build kind of subsurface scattering looking colors here, but you can also find interesting patterns. How you mix those together is basically up to you. For my final setup, I used a combination of both, so I just added them together and then dialed in these colors here. And a good thing to do in general is use another add node here and add this on top of 0.5. The base value for the hue is always 0.5. You will always shift the hue value here instead of replacing it. Now, a fun thing that you can do with the translucent shader as well is overdrive the value here. If you go above one, this basically resembles a emission shader. So if I drive this up, this basically looks like it's glowing from the inside. What we'll use this for is to drive a effect that looks like there's a glowing energy flowing through the shape here. And for this, I want to use the spline factor. So let's grab a attribute node here and restore this attribute under the name fac. And we can now use this one to drive the value of our spline here. At the moment, this is set to geometry, but needs to be instancer because we're working with instance geometry here. Now I want to use another add node here to have this add on top of a base value. In this case, 1.2 and then dial in this factor here. So grab a color ramp. This needs to be a bit lower even. If we grab another multiply node, you can really adjust the glow of this. I want to build this out a little bit. So I will adjust the color ramp here to be only a part in between here that is glowing up. So it has this end and starting point. If I then use another add node here, I can offset the color ramp here as you can see. Let's quickly go over how we'll animate this. You can see here the spline and the color ramp and the color ramp maps values between zero and one. To animate our color ramp here, we add onto the factor attribute. This number here is how much we are adding onto it. You can see that the color ramp moves to the left. If we are at one, the color ramp will be shifted completely off the range. So to animate this, we will have to add onto our factor attribute a value between one and not zero, but in this case, minus 0.2 because if we're here, the glow will be perfectly on the spline. This means we will have to move, in this case, 0.2 further to move it completely off the spline. As I am, I don't want to use keyframes to animate this. Instead, I want to use the time value. Unfortunately, we still don't have a scene time node in the shader context. So we will use a value and then set this to hashtag frame. This will output our frame number and we can now remap this value to be in the range of one to minus 0.2. So use a map range node, plug this in here. And for this, we need to now set our frame range. I want this to be 96 frames. This is a multiple of 24 because the base loop of the animation is 24 frames. In here, this needs to go from one to 96 and it needs to go to a minimum of minus 0.2 to one. If I plug this in here, this now animates over the whole frame range. If you want this to be a bit more modular, we can use this position value here as a driver. So we select our cutoff point here and we copy this as a new driver. We can then go in here and paste this driver and then edit it. And instead of using average value here, we want to use a scripted expression. And here under expression, we want to subtract one minus the position of the handle and then multiply this by minus one. You can now play around with the color ramp and this will make sure that its offset will always be correctly mapped. If you want this animation to happen multiple times within your frame range, you can use a float modulo here and again, paste the driver and then edit it. And here we want to use a scripted expression again. And this time this will be two minus the position. So what I could do now is for example, half this. Now we need to turn off the clamp here so it doesn't simply stop at the ends here, but repeats. And then this should move through this two times. I could now also set this to 24 and now it moves through the whole spline in one second. But again, I want this to be at 96, so it moves through there one time. 
Now what we can do as a last step is offset the color range of the glow. So it doesn't simply glow in the same color, but it's maybe offset by a little bit. So here we can use another add node and then copy this multiply node and plug this one in here. Let's get to a range that makes sense. And now this could glow in a little bit of a different color. Now as a last step, let's set up our world a little bit. So this isn't just a black background. So I grab a environment texture. And what I like to do is just use a random interesting picture, not even a HDRI, but just any picture and use this to drive the reflections in a setup. I dial this down quite a bit and also I don't want this picture to be seen in the background, so I copy this background node here and I mix those together using a light path node. This node tells the mix shader if a light ray hits the background directly or bounces off something first. Now I can set up this background to be a bit more interesting than just a black color. Let's get a texture coordinate and a mapping node here. I don't need this. And I'll use the window node here and funnel this to a color ramp again and this will drive my color. Let's set the background strength here back to 1 and you can now set up your background however you want. So this is the final setup that I came up with. I tweaked the colors a little bit, added some lights, added a few more splines to make the composition more interesting and then also added a little bit of compositing. If you want to have a closer look you can just download the file in the video description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, consider liking and subscribing. If there are any questions, just leave a comment. Also, if you want to see more Blender tutorials for free and have access to a big library of tutorials and courses, consider becoming a Patreon. That way you can help Antagma so we can afford to publish more free content like this. If you want more tutorials now, you can watch one of these videos here.